This is a Beneteau Swift Trawler 35. Now these are a really great boat when you've got all the time in the world, maybe you're retired, maybe you've given up sailing, and you just want to spend your time heading out to sea and just pootling down the coast from port to port and just living the marine life. And on that basis, they're super, super practical. And the most obvious example of that is this cut out here. You've got really low side decks. And what this means is if you're short-handed, even if you're on your own with a boat or you're with people who aren't really used to boat handling, you can handle everything from here because you can step on, you can get to the cleats. So for example, there's a cleat right here so you could untie the boat, step into here, and you're right at the helm immediately. And in fact, what they've done rather cleverly is put the controls, you can see the throttle and the thrusters and the wheel. You can get to all of that while you're stood on the side deck. So it's a really practical proposition for doing a lot of boating with. But what we're gonna do is not step on here. In fact, we'll go around to the back and do the whole tour from there because there's quite a lot to show you at the back here as well. Starting with this bathing platform and this transom, because you'll notice that it's got these sections here. That's because you've got the transom door in the center, but actually these will hinge out as well. That's why these tracks are in the floor and they clip into there. And that opens the whole of the back of this then. These are basically like this on either side. And it means that you've got almost like a sort of beach club area here. And also these sockets here, so you can put a sort of swimming pool style ladder in when it comes up and over and then down, makes it really easy to get in and out of the water. There is an emergency ladder as well. And you can see that down under the side. So if you fell into the water, you can still get off the boat. You don't need that to be in place, but it means that if you're swimming off the boat, that's a brilliant way to get on and off. This has got the canopies on at the minute because it's a bit of a showery day today. But of course, these all come off and then you can have this all open and you have then the shade of the flybridge overhang just there. But this is interesting as well because in here, this is the inside of these sections that open, but these are actually folding seats. You can see if I open this one, there's one that's folded up before, after, before, you get the idea. So yeah, that whole area opens up, those seats drop down and there's a table from inside that can come out, sit out here and that just makes a lovely area connected to the water absolutely fantastic and in fact that ladder up to the flybridge will go there in a little while of course but that also can fold away if you want to and while we're in this area i'll show you underneath here because this is the lazarette and so what you have in here is just a really good storage area this is an interesting thing you see this bit of ironmongery on the back that's an emergency tiller don't often see that on motorboats but that means that if you ever had steering gear failure you can plug that into that socket there and steer the boat. That's a really neat idea. Shouldn't ever need it, but it's reassuring to know that it's there. But yeah, nice big area. You can get your covers in there or whatever else you want to put in there all out of the way. And that little handle, in case you're wondering, is for the manual bilge pump. So there's this bilge pump over on that. That handle plugs into it. It has electric pumps, of course. But again, that's just a backup. So you've got another way of pumping the bilges if you ever wanted to. That's Close that one up and then we'll head on inside. Lots to look at in this one actually because there's some quite neat ideas. For example, this table here, that's freestanding. Also, it opens out. So you can see that there's a, a section there. These pull out, oops, these pull outwards and then there's a center section that unfolds and you can make that much bigger if you want to. And that is like a Z bed. So you use a proper bed that folds out of there. So if people want to sleep up here, they can do. And what's quite neat is that there are curtains, you can see them just there, and a track around here and around to there makes this into a completely separate cabin. And it's great because if you're down in the lower deck accommodation at the front and you want to come out, you don't have to come through this section of the boat, of course, because you can go out through that door. A lot of thought gone into this. You can put a TV up on here. In fact, it's pre-wired for it. If we have a look in here, you can see the circuit breakers and so on are in here but also you can see there's already wiring for a television if you want it, and then those wires will come out through here, and you can have like a 22 inch TV that just sits onto there, and then underneath this is a load of storage all the way along here. As I say, it's designed to be the kind of boat super practical and that you can spend some serious amounts of time on. For a 35 foot boat, they really do get a lot into this. And that one there, is another fridge. I think that's an option actually, that one. I don't think that's standard, it's a bit of an extra cooling because the standard fridge, that lives over here. So you've got that one there as standard, 
And as I say, I think this owner has chosen that as an option. This is actually a sold boat. These are really popular, so they just need to get sold before we even get on board of them. Been underneath that one. I like the way I put this on here, because people tend to sit in places like this when you're underway and just chat to the helmsman if they want to. And also on here, another option, they have gas cooking as standard, but this one's gone all electric. So you've got the oven there and then the electric hob underneath. More bits of storage tucked away in places like this. And then you've got your sinks under here. Like so. And even up here, somewhere for charts or other bits and pieces. So every little bit of area they've used. Now, if we look over on the other side, this then is that helm. This is the door that we came through, and that is where you can step straight on and off the boat. So as I say, that's a really super practical area, really easy to walk through. This does drop down, so if you want to sit at the helm, you can drop that down and sit there if you want to. You can see that there's a footrest for that as well over on that side. It's quite nice, actually, to lift that up and just lean against that as you poodle down the coast. And then over here, we've got the uh, multifunction display, so that's charts, radar, that kind of thing. Uh, there's an autopilot on this one as well, very useful. Bow and stern thrusters on a single engine boat. I think that's an option to have the stern thruster, but well worthwhile. But again, we're back to the practical detailing, because you'll notice that there's hinges up here. And the reason for that is that if you undo these little knurled bolts here and here, take those out, that whole thing then lifts up, and it means you can access all of the back of this if you ever need to get to it for maintenance. You can do it. Shouldn't need to, but it's great to know that you can, and great to know that you can do it so easily. It's a single engine control because it's a single engine boat, and then your trim tabs are here as well. And really good visibility, very thin mullions on this one. Great view out all the way around. And more practical details, look at put these handrails up here in the ceiling and down over there. So again, if you're out on a big long cruise down the coast and you're getting somewhere where it's rocking around a bit, it's easy for people to move around the boat nice and easily and safely. Let's head on down to the lower deck. It's a standard layout on this one, so they all come like this, which is guest cabin on this side, with two full length single berths, so they're adult sized berths in there. And again, then you've got storage in places like this. So your guests or your kids can get their gear away nice and easily. And that leaves space for a really good master cabin up here at the front. That is a very nice size and big windows. It'd be great to be at anchor and wake up and be able to look out of these because there's a really nice view out. Let's have a look. We are in Ocean Village at the minute in Southampton and these have blinds of course that drop down so that you can uh, have some privacy or stop the light coming through if you want to and exactly the same for the one up above. So this slides across that one is as you can see a fly screen and if you put it the other way you get a night blind and that opens again for ventilation these circular sections open too by the way so you can get plenty of air through here speakers are up in here as well now on this side you can see you can put a tv on here and again it's pre-wired so there's the aerial socket there for it power socket for it there so it's dead easy if someone wants to put a tv in here then they can do and then on this side Decent size hanging locker. That's the Fusion stereo for this cabin. There's another one of those in the saloon. And another thing you find in here is if we lift this fellow here, big storage area underneath, pretty full at the moment, but you can see for extra bedding, all that kind of stuff, that can all live in there. Over on this side, shelves. And this is quite neat. These are double doors. So these close like this. So that they're not taking up too much space in the cabin once they're open. And then back from here is the heads. Really good signs. And what they've done with this one is they've managed to get a separate showering area in. So you can see there's a door here that comes across like that. And it means you can be in there showering and keep all of this area dry so you've got someone to come out and get dressed or clean your teeth or whatever without having to stand in the water that you've just showered in. More storage tucked away in places like that and again you've got an opening window in here for ventilation and more space down underneath. Very nice and this one's got these neat magnetic catches again as well so you're not going to catch yourself on these 
These are really clever. In fact, I thought these were just magnetic, but they're not. Because if we have a look, I don't know if we could be able to pick this up. There. Can you see that going across there? It is actually a proper catch. So it is held in properly. But when you open it, it stays in magnetically until you close it. Genius. Under our floor here, you've got access then. This one, for example, is to service areas. So that's the sump for the shower and the sink and so on. So that's just to get to your plumbing nice and easily. And that one, just a bit more storage. Battery switches are here as well. They're down there. And that, I think, concludes the lower deck. Let's go and look at the outside. So we'll head. I think what we'll do, actually, we haven't had magic shoes for a long time, have we? Let's go out this way and summon the shoes, shall we? I'm Movius. Editors. I'm going to do that one day and they're going to go to the side, aren't they? <laughs> so this is, as I was saying earlier, perfect when it comes straight out of the boat and straight onto the decks. So that works really well. You'll notice some hinges on that step there. If we lift that one up, you've got fillers in there with a drain. So any dribbles of fuel don't end up on your teak. Up here then, you can have sunbathing cushions up here on the front if you want to, depending on where you're keeping the boat. Great for the med, of course. And a really big open foredeck all the way around here. You've got an electric anchor winch up here on the front. Nice little seat you can sit on. And that one there is a huge locker for your anchor chain. And also you could drop a couple of fenders or whatever in there as well if you wanted to. This is brand, brand new. So brand new. <laughs> the anchor chain and the anchor aren't even there yet. As I say, it's just come into the country and it's about to be commissioned for its first owner. Let's go around this side. Now what's neat about this is you've got asymmetric side decks. So this one is a bit higher and a bit narrower. Perfectly usable. We can walk down here absolutely no problem at all. And that takes us back to the cockpit. But by being asymmetric, what it means is you get the maximum cabin inside because clearly the wider you make this, the narrower you make the cabin. But if you come down this side, this is wider and deeper. So this is the one you'd normally use to go forward and back through the boat. But you have got that access to the other side if you want it. This one also has this great overhang as you can see, so a little bit of a super yacht theme to that. I love the way they put this Berto logo on the inside of here as well. Nice little bit of attention to detail there. Let's come on back. This is interesting. I didn't show you this. This is a hose outlet. I think there's one on the front as well. But there's also, if we go down onto the back, that is a hose inlet. And what that means is that a lot of marinas, and this is one of them, you can plug straight into the marina water system and have shore pressure water on the boat. It bypasses the water tank. And it means that when you're having showers or you're doing deck washing or whatever else, it's just like the kind of pressure you get at home. It's not relying on the pumps of the boat and you never run out because it's direct mains supply. So that's very clever. Of course, when you leave the marina, you unplug from that and you use your water tank on the boat as normal. But nice touch. Let's head on up here, take a look at the flybridge. really good size. We haven't got the cushions up here at the minute. They're in the lazarette because we were having a shower of rain, although it's cleared up quite nicely since then. But there are cushions, of course, that go all the way around here. That's a drawer fridge underneath there, so you can keep drinks up here, keep them cool. And you've got this table here that folds out. This is a really great place to come and sit of an evening, have a drink, have something to eat. Very nice indeed. Great view out. And when you're underway, you can drive the boat from up here. People can join you, have a chat. It's just a nice social area. So this is the upper helm, you've got a nice bucket seat for the helmsman. And then up here, there's a repeater for the multifunction display, your engine control again, bow and stern thruster control, trim tabs, pretty much all the stuff you've got downstairs, autopilot control is all controlled from here as well. That one there, incidentally, is a remote control for the searchlight, which is that little fella up on the front just there. Cup holders here as well, so your drinks aren't sliding about when you're heading down the coast. And another Fusion stereo with speakers up here as well. So a nice big social area, and there's a bimini on this one as well. So this will come forward and shade this area if it's a hot, sunny day. And then this area back here, we can do what you like with this. You can put steamer chairs out here. You can put some big bean bags. You could put a barbecue up here if you wanted to. This one's also got these shades around it. So just give you a bit of a windbreak and a bit more privacy. You can have those if you want, or you can take those off and just have the stainless steel around there. But again, a nice usable area. And it just makes this a really big, 
comfortable space when you're out on the boat. This is your uh, mount for your radar. Of course, the radar is up on the top there. Nav lights are on here as well, aerials. And that is the anometer, anemometer, anemometer. <laughs> I can never, ever pronounce that. I'll edit out the right one. No, I won't. I'll leave them all in. That's the thing that tells you how fast the wind's blowing. <laughs> There's an instrument at the helm. It's a really useful thing when you're down below because you can't feel the wind at all. It just tells you the direction and the, uh, the wind speed. Again, some nice little details. These are to drop like an enzyme into, so you can have your enzyme fluttering out from there. And look at where they've carved these out with the Bento logo. Pretty cool, huh? Very nicely done. Right, let's head on back down. The last thing to look at is the engine. And to get to this, that's underneath the floor. And again, because you need to move the table out, I'm going to use a little bit of iMovie magic. Here we go. So this is a Cummings 425 horsepower engine. It's a single engine, as we've discussed. And it's nice and straightforward because you've got a straight shaft drive. You can see the shaft coming out the back there. Gearbox on the back of the engine. So it's dead simple. And what's great is that all the service items are on this side. So you can see the dipstick, for example, is that yellow fellow just there. You've got the air filter here. You've got the raw water strainer. It's just here. That's straining the raw water. Fuel filter as well on that side. So pretty much everything that needs to be done, certainly in terms of daily checks, but also in terms of servicing, you can do from here. If you did have something major go wrong and you had to get to the other side, you can do, because the settee just lifts out and you can lift the floor up. But to be honest, 99% of the time, this gets you to everything that you need to get to. Now, in terms of performance, of course, this is what puts the Swift into Swift trawler. So the idea of this boat is that you can cruise along at six knots if you want to, and at that speed it's using about eight litres an hour. So you've got sort of 700 miles of range, and that's even with sort of about 20% reserve. So, you know, that's giving you a big safety element to it. But you can pick the speed up, you can do 14 knots if you want to and cruise at that all day, but flat out, this is pushing it past 20 knots, which for a sort of trawler style boat is really good. It gives you the ability to outrun the weather if you're out and you're a few miles offshore and it's all picking up, you can get the hammer down and get yourself home. So it really does give you a lot of flexibility for this style of boat. But in actual fact, as I say, most people with this type of thing, they go out, they're out all day, pooting down the coast, six knots, using hardly any fuel at all. It's just a really nice way to spend your day. Cool, let's drop that one back down. And we're back. That's about it. I think I'm going up on the foredeck and finish up on this one because it's just such a nice boat to move around and I think that's the real key to this. It's the sort of boat you head off, as I was saying earlier, for a day on the water and you can just move around, mooch about, sit in the sun, watch the coast go by. Just a really, really great place to be. So let's come right up to the front and sit on this little seat up here in the bow. There we go and we'll say massive thanks to Ancaster for organising that tour. They're the dealers for these. I'll put a link to those guys in the description and as ever huge thanks to you guys for watching we'll catch you on another one of these very soon take care bye bye